<laughs> now we're recording. Sorry about that, guys, on uh, YouTube and Facebook. But you just missed some crazy game there. Unfortunately, I'll just say it again. We'll nah, they're watching it on YouTube. Okay, yeah, they missed it. They missed it. If you're watching it on YouTube or Facebook, it's a playback. It's a playback. That's why you tune into the actual thing to hear the things. You get me? Yeah, yeah. That's that is, that game, that 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 game is worth. That's worth peace. That's like right. everything we put out is sure. worth like For sure. peace. So basically, guys, on YouTube, you guys miss out how I basically told everyone in this live how I randomly got a zero point one ETH, which is basically a thousand dollars by two thousand twenty-three. Yep, two thousand twenty-four. So obviously we've got to do our favorite thing, which is tell you that just in case you think that we're financial advisors, or just in case you think that we want to be perceived as financial advisors, we just got to tell you, we are not financial advisors. No, sir. At all. We have no clue about financial advice. However, we are working with an accredited financial advisor. So if you want to get some accredited financial advice, let us know, and we'll point you to a financial advisor that's accredited and has the qualifications that you can talk to. Now, all investment, if you didn't know, comes with, with risk. risk. Comes with risk. And that risk is that you could lose all of your investment. So everything that we're saying on this show is for educational and entertainment purposes only. So please do not use anything that we're saying as part of your investment thesis. Please, ultimately, the most important thing in the whole investing game is to do your own research. Yeah. So that's that little disclaimer, out of the way. Is there any other disclaimer that we can say? Uh, no, I think you that's, spawned, that's, that's it. Okay, cool. So today's episode, what we're talking about, we're going to talk about Inner Wealth Games. Um, um, oh, I wonder if this will come up on Yahoo. Um, but let's just start off with something that happened this week that nobody is talking about. Let's go to Google. Uh, which Nobody's one? talking about it so much that I didn't even know. Where where would it go? To, where would it be? Would it if I just want to do the Google share? Oh, screen? oh, you want to just share the screen? Yeah, yeah. Okay. not yet. I want to blow it up on Google first and then share it. Okay, no worries. Um, so let's just get this. Over so to this side. In the chat, what I want you to do is write down the most popular drinks brand in the world. What the is chat. it, guys? What is the most popular drinks brand in the world? Possibly the most popular brand in the world. Or, or on IG, because we've got five people live on IG, what is the most popular drinks brand in the world? You can catch this on uh, this call on Zoom, by the way, guys. It's much better because we're going to share screen in a second. And have we got any answers coming through? Oh, we've got Coca-Cola. Got Coca-Cola. Okay. Coca-Cola from No Limit. Coke, yeah, probably Coke. That is correct. So let's share the screen. Coca-Cola. And look at that. NFT, That's Coca-Cola baby. doing nfts let me just share the screen on here so you guys can see now for me personally coca-cola doing nfts That's is like crazy. kind of the biggest brand in the world giving a cosign that you know um for guys on zoom is this showing the is this showing the screen i don't know i think it is it's not yeah I can, I can see as coca-cola um auction it's first nft more brands are entering the Metaverse. I don't know what more cosigns people need. We've got Disney, we've got Fox, we've now got Coca Cola. I'm sure Amazon was doing something as well. Mm-hmm. Like all doing NFTs. Now, if you and the NBA, and then we've got Major League Baseball sponsored by um, a crypto exchange, and then we've got UFC sponsored by crypto.com. I don't know what else people are waiting for to understand that the biggest companies in the world are involved in, in crypto. NFT, basically, <laughs> basically investing in Ethereum. Yeah. Basically. It, like, you can't create an NFT and not be involved in crypto and blockchain. Like For sure. So they're all doing it, but they're just doing it in a very kind of... Well, we, we've not bought any Bitcoin, as we're telling you, but we have created an NFT, which means indirectly you've bought some Ethereum because otherwise you couldn't... Have you even uploaded the NFT in the first place? Mm-hmm. So basically, indirectly, Coca-Cola have Ethereum, mm-hmm. but no one's talking about it. Yo, have you seen that video where Grant Cardone said he invested? No, he didn't invest in Bitcoin, but he accepted the Bitcoin payment in 2019. Yep. Yeah. And I think that's what and a lot of people, companies are doing. Bro, that, video's not got, that video's not got a million. Like Everybody go check out the Grant Cardone video where he dropped it in 2019 and he talks about receiving a crypto payment. And he was saying how um, he thinks this might be the future. 
I don't, I don't I don't feel like feel like he's ever commented on crypto since. Because um, he doesn't need to. But he doesn't need to. He doesn't, he's not bothered. Um, what was the other thing that I was going to talk about? Oh yeah, this kind of little nutshell that came out today. So the reason everyone needs to be investing, um, I put this out on the Instagram page. Um, and where is, it? where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I think it might be on the home page for Yahoo Finance. So on the home page, it was talking about how the inflation rate for the UK. It, oh, there it is first bit is predicting 3.9% in 2022. That's crazy. That's wild. So um, everybody needs to go and get a 3.9% raise. Otherwise, you're financially going to be, you're going to have 3.9% less in, in theory. Um, and I think this is the danger of what people don't realize. If you are not investing and you are not beating the inflation rate, you're going to feel like you're going backwards. You're going to feel like, why are my bills getting more, like, why am I not being able to pay things off in the same amount? Because everything's going up and you're still being paid the same amount of money. If you're being paid the same amount of money, but the prices of things are going up, a compound effect is very, very dangerous. Let's say, for example, again, let's just keep it super simple. And let's go to the UK. So in my um, financial literacy thing, we do this. UK average inflation rate. Let's see what it is. So it's normally around 2% and it's now gone up to 4 So let's say it's 2% over 10 years. That's a 20% increase in inflation in the prices of things. Now, well, even more because of compound interest. Yeah, more, yeah. Percent. More because yeah, compound let's, interest. Let's, let's even do it on a calculator. Let's let's do it right now. So let's say, for example, let's do, let's call it worst lowest case scenario, twenty percent, right? Who has had who gets a twenty percent raise in ten years? I don't know. I've not heard of that. So so if you're not investing, so, you are in a lot of trouble. And what's happening is indirectly and very subtly you're being able to pay for more and more things on a monthly basis and this is the trap because the more things you're paying for on a monthly basis guess what each one of those things is is a liability that you've tied yourself into a contract for a year two years three years five years now let's say for example netflix right netflix is how much a month like 12 pounds right it's like 12 pound a month is it 12? so it's nine pounds a month right now that nine pounds, obviously, they're going to increase that by 2% mm -hmm. every year. Mm -hmm. So eventually, in 10 years' time, that'll be 20 pounds. Mm -hmm. But if you're still being paid six pounds an hour like you was, or 10 pounds an hour it's like you are, it's long for you. You're going to have to work more hours. Just to pay off get, that one bill. And then get less. Yeah. All right, let me spit some game. So we, got, well, we guys got on the standards. They're always creating more money. So the phrase they're printing more money is pretty outdated. They're not really printing more money. They're just adding more numbers onto the screen. Right. <laughs> so let me let me let me let me let me blow your, your mind. So okay, let's have a look at the United States debt. Okay. Oh, this stuff is <clears throat> no, this 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 is this is wild and scary. So <laughs> <laughs> my my language, okay. So look, this, this is so easy to find that we didn't even have to go deep. We'd have to go to Yahoo Finance. This is Wikipedia. This is my 15, 16 year old little sister. Can uh, she's she's 16, I should know her age. But yeah, like my little sister can understand this, right? So as of August 31st of August 2020, the federal debt held by the public was 20.83 trillion. Okay. A total national debt of 26.7 trillion. Um, something like the 99% of the, okay, here we are, okay. At the end of 2020, debt held by public was approximately 99.3% of GDP, okay? So 99.3% <laughs> so of the US economy is, is debt. So we guys have to understand this. Let's just stop, stop sharing the screen so I, can, so I look, I can look straight in the camera, right? They're always creating more fiat currency, so we have to put it. So money has to go somewhere. It has to go to the stock market. It has to go into commodities. It has to go into gold. It has to go into now crypto, which is why, obviously, it makes sense that 
you know, the crypto community were the, were the most volatile market in the world because the stock market basically controls the crypto market. The whales control everything. And we just got to we just got to go whale hunting. We've got to go whale hunting. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, I'm going to leave possibly one of the most important gems that I teach in my lessons is hidden in the Blockchain Sensei Instagram. So oh, those wow. of you that can right now, I want you to go to the Blockchain Sensei Instagram. Oh, let's just, let's just, and let's we're just going to show them a little gem that is going to change their life, their family's lives. And just, I might have shown it once before on the game, and I definitely show it to all students. And this is the map of when the whales eat and when they throw up. It's basically, if you, <laughs> it's, literally a blueprint if you're like oh i wonder when the market's gonna go up or I wonder when the market's gonna go down it literally has done the same thing for the last 50 years and i'm about to show you what it is and that's just because i'm nice like that um so this information here we go right there it's buried deep 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 hidden away in the blockchain sensei instagram so those of you that actually three hours ago so it's there for you so as you can see surprise oh look people in the waiting room oh wow oh Where's sorry Let's let them in. Let them in. To Mario and Paul Haygreen. Hey there, guys. Sorry about that. Okay, cool. So let's talk through this, this major gem. So the market traditionally for the past 10 years has been down in August. For the past 10 years, since the past 20 years, since 19, what was that? 1950, the market is always up in July so what would that mean if since 1950 the market has been up in july and since 1950 the market is down in august and most definitely yeah. December, what would you probably want to do in july and some some little listen to the old you yeah. probably want to take your profits and then wait for the yeah. traditional 50 years of proven evidence that the market dips in September and buy the dip in September. And then what happens? The market moves up October, November, December. So just kind of uh, told you what's going to happen there for the next, well, what's happened for the last 50 years might happen again. Again. But obviously possibly. it's not, but it's not financial advice. It's not financial advice. I'm just saying that it's happened that for the last 50 years. Might happen again. Being as, you know, this year, <laughs> the market did kind of dip in February, like it has done for the last 50 years. So it probably might dip again where it did before. Now, Quinky Dinky, if the entire stock market is worth that's more like 104 trillion 104 trillion and the market dips which is people <laughs> taking profit where do we think when everyone's panicking and the market has dipped and they're looking for an alternative asset to put their money into all these trillions of dollars what industry do you think it might go into I think some of it will go to crypto. I think some of it okay. might go into crypto. That might be a shout, to be fair. So, Listen, yeah. Let's just peep some game, right? So oh, you're showing them this one. I'm showing them this one. Okay, so March 2020, this was uh, Corona, right, as you can see. And uh, during coronavirus, the stock market was valued approximately $63 trillion. The stock market has increased from $63 trillion all the way to $104 trillion. Let me say that again. Let me say them bars again. Okay. The stock market, once again, Instagram gang is Mr. Hardy. If you don't mind my cameraman for it's a actually second. mad that people right. don't deep it. Like okay, that. no, 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 no. The stock market was valued at $62 trillion around the start of coronavirus. And then what happened? The Fed created a lot of money because 20% of the US dollars in existence approximately were created during coronavirus. So in the past 18 months, the total you know, US dollar supply, which is, um, uh, you know, the fallback currency for a lot of the world, which is kind of scary. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully it's going to be Bitcoin. <laughs> so, like, so stock market has gone from 62 trillion. Whilst everybody was suffering, the whales only got richer. So the stock market 
increased by... Not even slightly richer, though. Uh, considerably oh, richer. Offensively. Offensively <laughs> richer, right. They literally incre- the Wales literally increased their net worth by 50% in the past 18 months. So the richest people in the world increased their wealth by approximately 50% because the top 1% people will definitely have a lot of wealth in the stock market. And then we go to crypto. This is why, like... I, me and Miss Hardy can do all the price predictions in the in, in in the world, right? And I don't believe that at the end of this year we're going to see one, um, sorry, three hundred k Bitcoin and ten k ETH. But I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. Like it would just be like, oh, okay, that makes that makes so much sense, right? Like if you literally go to CoinMarketCap.com and if you actually just deep for a very quick second. That the market cap of the entire cryptocurrency market is merely 1.6 trillion. This is, I got in crypto at 300 billion. Okay, the stock market has increased from 60 to 100. That's 40 trillion. So why can't crypto increase from 1.6 to 8? Come on, come on, come on, guys. Is that if, realistic when okay, they're going to okay. be taking profit, as we've just seen, like they do? For the last 50 years, take profit in August and September. It's crazy. So literally your last opportunity, like ever. Do you, do you think we'll ever see 30k Bitcoin no, ever again? Never. never. Wow. Because there is Big this. Famous. Big, big, never. If you if people actually comprehend the amount that go back to that Vanguard thing again. Go go, go back to the Vanguard talk. Right? Anyway, am I still sharing this? People screen? have to deep and That's understand. Good. The more that this has gone up, the more profit that is being gonna going to be taken to be put into alternative let, assets. Let, 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 no, 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 let's look at this right. So I'm not the greatest of technical analysis, but I understand that this is a potential support, right? Mm-hmm. Even 93 trillion. Mm-hmm. The stock market can easily go from 104 trillion to nine, theoretically nine trillion can be taken yeah, on the stock market. We're expecting a nine percent, a nine to twelve percent dip. Okay, great, right? So that's nine trillion dollars. Mm, well, nine trillion dollars. The entire crypto market is only 1.6. Why can't a little three trillion go in there? Easily. Easily. I'm, I mean, it's not financial advice, but it could happen. Because let's say, for example, there was a digital asset that had been going up over 100% every year without fail. Without fail. And then your assets had gone down and you were looking for an alternative asset to invest in that everyone was talking about. You, you might give it a bit of a try. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just give it a bit of a try and see what happens. Guys, I got in crypto here, right? Approximately here, July 2020. So whilst everybody's crying here, because they got in here, look at the big picture. And it hasn't started. <laughs> it hasn't started. I always try to explain to people about time bias when you're looking at the charts. Time bias is one of the most dangerous things on the chart. Remember I was talking to you about oh. it, about how when you're looking at a chart, it makes you think that you've, that the moment now is the most important moment and that's the big run. Mm-hmm. It's not, it really isn't like, it's not too late. It really isn't too late. It's not too late, I would say, to get into Bitcoin in five years' time. But you probably want to do it now because minimum Bitcoin's going to be in five years' time is hey, sure, sure. Uh, 300K. Sure, it's gold because like, even gold on 20% since coronavirus. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Whereas um, I don't know about anyone's wages going up by 20%. 20%. We don't know about that. I don't know about anyone's money in the bank going up by 20%. You know, no, but, for sure. No, for sure. I don't know about that. But right. yeah, go on. Spit, spit some in inner wealth game. Okay, let me, let me, let me spit some inner wealth game because I feel like... <clears throat> All right. So what I want to talk about is I want to talk about tapping into your truth. Um specifically your inner wealth because this is how this is how you're going to make the most money you're going to make the most money you're going to acquire the greatest portfolio in the world for you by tapping into your truth because as gary v says how you make your money is so much more important than how much you make so let me give let me give um a, a extreme example so i'm not here to show my political beliefs but there's certain political well most political parties I would never work for, right? Which is why I'm in edu- you know, financial literacy and education. I'm not in the world of politics. But if somebody was to offer me, say, a million pounds a month to work for a government that I despised, I wouldn't take that. I would much rather live 
the startup CEO, multidisciplinary hustler that I am and earn the range of anything from 1.8 to 1.8 to a bad month to 7k a good month, you know, like that. Mm. Yeah. Aye, aye, aye. Don't, don't leave me hanging. Don't leave me hanging. Literally, if I'm, I'm gonna be hella, I'm gonna be super transparent with you guys. Um, basically, anyone who follows me personally, you would have seen it. You can go check it out on the Ninja T feed. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it there forever. I'm, I'm, I'm never deleting that block of my life. I basically lost four family members, right, in, uh, in uh, 21 days. So I lost my uncle-in-law, rest in peace, on I believe Tuesday the sixth. Then Thursday the 8th, I lost my biological uncle. Then Friday the 9th, I believe, uh, forgive me if these days aren't completely correct, um, I lost my granddad. And then two weeks later, I lost my, my auntie. Now, I dealt with my three deaths, you know, my uncle, uncle-in-law, granddad's pretty well because my uncle-in-law had COVID. He, he was dying. My, my uncle had cancer. And my granddad could have died anytime between 2019, but I was dealing with it well. Like I've, I feel like I was still, you know, plodding along. But as soon as my biological auntie died, oh, 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 it went off. I mean, I, I've never been more sad than I've ever been than one week ago today. I never cried. I couldn't, I couldn't stand up, right? Because I was thinking about my cousins with, um, you know, three. Um, they lost both their parents in 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 in, in three weeks, and death. Like what it does is it humbles you and. The philosophy that we wrote within Blockchain Sensei is that we don't want to be known as kind of like a heartless, ruthless, get as much money as possible. We we want people to live, you know, 360 well-balanced lives because there's times to look at the market. There's time to tune out, out of the market. There's time to work on other things because I, I guarantee this might sound very, very corny, but when you get your mental correct and your spirit correct, you will make the most money you 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 will see wealth that you've never seen. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I only got in crypto really in late June slash early July 2020. I actually got in crypto in 2019, but I used to just buy and sell Bitcoin Ethereum. I don't really count that. I was basically trading them. I didn't respect them as assets. I just, I mean, I, I made a couple of quid, but not nothing crazy. But anyway, um, yeah, I started understanding what crypto was in kind of May 2021 and uh, subsequently I just dollar cost averaged my paychecks in uh, July and November as much as um as much as you know learning about technical analysis from you know Mr Hardin um doing blockchain set you know um making crazy wins on stupid meme coins like safe moon the best thing that I ever did really was I learned the value of taking a long time to, well, taking a reasonable amount of time and actioning, investing as my knowledge expanded. So when I understood this much about Bitcoin, this much of percentage of my wealth was in, was in uh, crypto. Um, now at present, I'm holding about 6.1% Bitcoin. Um, I did have 6.7%, but I'd, I actually sold uh, a bit of my Bitcoin, Ethereum and XRP just to survive this month. Um, which is, I think, is quite reasonable. You know, I, I think it's yeah, I think it's, is, is relatively, relatively reasonable. <laughs> and the thing, what investing, I, I want everyone to kind of take away from this is life is going to hit you in ways that you didn't even plan for. If I can say to to everybody now, like you got to be ready to 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 lose a lot of people who you know in a short period of time. I didn't, I didn't think it was possible for like four people to die in three weeks but it happened and my portfolio was a big part of 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 say like my sanity mm -hmm. right because i'm fortunate enough to be five to six months time rich so if i if i stopped getting paid today i could continue my lifestyle of um I could pay my rent and I could eat and I could and I, and I, and I could go to the gym and continue to uh, even invest in my music because like music probably costs 200 to 400 pounds a month. Um, for those that don't know, I make, I make music outside of Blockchain Sensei. That's kind of my main, main hustle, music, Blockchain Sensei, right? So I want everyone to see their crypto stocks, if you've got gold, you know, whatever you're invested in, as a long-term sanity safety net 100 percent. like i can i can have i'm ready to grind again but the only reason i could heal so quickly is because i spent an immense amount of time doing not much but meditating working out watching comedy 
and hanging out and getting lit for about three weeks. I've not, I've spent minimum time in the markets because it's just not where my head's been at. I, I've turned down a lot of money from people that wanted to pay me. But you know, Mr. Harding got it, so you can still, but I'm, I'm back it. now, I'm back now, I'm back now. But um, so imagine like, Kevin, you're a DJ, right? So, okay, I'm just gonna spit game on, on everyone in this room. So Kevin is a DJ and I, and I know he puts out SoundCloud mixes, et cetera. All you need to do is keep doing your thing, Kevin, but include donation links for uh, crypto and uh, PayPal and Cash App. I recently received an anonymous donation of 0.1 ETH, which I think is fantastic. The person just said like, I know you're going through a hard time, hope the ETH helps. And I'm like, whoa, that, that, I didn't even ask for the ETH. So yeah, uh, make sure you put donation links. Um, what I'd really like to see moving forward between now and 2025, I'd like to see a cultural shift where people actually um, are regularly, because, if I've got regular donations, I regularly donate. Mm, Does that yeah, make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah the yeah, more yeah, donations yeah. I receive, the more, more I'm give likely up. to give up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So because that I don't receive the culture it, of becomes don't the culture. giving assets to each other. Even minor stuff like we should make it normal to give out. Like I gave I gave Chris APL like five pound on cash up, and he put his Spain and Jim coin, then it doubled. Sick. Do you know what I mean? Sick. Like it's that kind of culture that I want to implement because because mm. because, because we're living in like in like asset culture now aren't we yeah 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 yeah, yeah. it's changing it's, it's not like i was talking about this the other day with, with um, I'm just gonna share like would you rather someone gives you let's say a grand in cash no way or 100 pound in bitcoin 100 pound um no uh, was, is it a grand in fiat cash i probably fiat cash. cash if it's a thousand because because i because i because I, I know what to do well, you with can't it. you can't yeah exactly you know what to but do. But if I wasn't allowed to invest it. Yeah, no, so it's £100 in cash that you have to spend and that on stuff. On, on stupid things. Yeah. Like not even groceries. Yeah. Like I had to waste it. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm not wasting money like that, bro. Or. I feel too bad. Or £100 in, in Bitcoin. I would much rather take the £100 in Bitcoin. For sure. Because that £100 in Bitcoin could eventually get me a loan to buy a house with. Um, not like I, I want to I really talk on something that. I think a lot of people are missing, and I only really understood it after listening to the Michael Saylor interview. And I highly recommend anybody to just type in on YouTube, Michael Saylor, because he's the main, he's one of the biggest holders of Bitcoin. Isn't he the biggest Bitcoin holder? I think holder? he might be the biggest Bitcoin holder. Um, and he's just basically saying, look, what people are misunderstanding with Bitcoin is it's like having real estate in New York in the 1800s. You're not going to sell it. You don't sell it. What you do is you use it to get collateral so you can remortgage and refinance it. So let's say, for example, you've got a grand of Bitcoin now. That grand of Bitcoin could be then worth, in 10 years' time, 100K. You can then get loans of 10K as long as your interest rate on that loan is, what, 2% a year or 5% a year. If Bitcoin is increasing by 20% per year, What's paying off that loan? It's nothing. And this is the way that big money works. The only reason companies are on the stock market is so that they can increase their market cap so that they can get a bigger loan against their market cap and go, well, we're good for this money because look at how much our company has gone up by. I am going to go all spiritual guru, right? Because that, 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 that's, that's kind of the, the, the vibration I'm on right now. I'm going to get more technical later on this month. But this is the biggest cheat code of, of I think, maybe since, I would say, 2016, right? Like, because in the past half decade, human evolution has just, ding, like, we meet 13, 18-year-olds that are just geniuses, right? Like, like I, right. I was literally working with this 18-year-old, and recently he's called Cameron, super, super cool guy. And I'm like, yo, you're, like, on my level, but you're seven years younger. And I'm so pretty, much. like, like, I'm pretty damn wise, do you know what I mean? I'm not saying I'm a genius reading. or anything, but I do my reading, right? So literally, this is the blueprint for this is a blueprint for success. Study the most successful people in the world. So you're in crypto. If you don't know who Michael Saylor is, why? He's the biggest Bitcoin holder. I think, if not the biggest, one of the biggest Bitcoin holders in the world, right? He's extremely articulate. I also relate to the fact that he got in crypto around the same time as me, I believe, mm -hmm. only in 2020. Mm -hmm. So he's like blueprint of like, 
yeah, I've got foreign crypto in a retail space, but he's got foreign crypto by whale standard. Yeah, he's the one that got Elon into Bitcoin. Listen, th- th- this guy's not is isn't some kind of OG. Like he he's a perfect example of somebody who's adapted to the climate, which everybody needs to do, just adapt to the climate and accept that the world is moving to this certain order. And you can try to fight the wave and be broke, or you can accept that the tide is flowing a certain way and just jump on your little mini dinghy boat whilst the whales just control the storm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's it. Just, <laughs> that's just, about just it. move with the tide, man. Move with, and in terms of the whales moving with, with the storm, I'm just going to get you to uh, not share the screen while I just show people this, because this, oh, sure. uh, this is a uh, pretty weird what I'm about to show you. It doesn't get more big whales than this. Are we ready for this? And you know what? In fact, let me share the screen. Let me show the screen. Let's just make it accessible for everybody because okay. that's what I'm about. Yeah, yeah, I'm, not, sure. I'm not about making things exclusive. I'm about, yo, let's just put out the madness out there on the internet. And then in due time, when people go to watch it back in their own time, they'll be like, yo, that was like... Yo, this episode's being re-uploaded on Instagram. I don't know why we didn't do this in the future. World this is- Economic Forum. Does anyone know who what e- World Economic Forum is? Please type in chat if you know what World Economic Forum is or on the Zoom Anyone? Anyone know what World Economic Forum is? Anyone ever heard of it before? Um, so it's where everyone that controls the world basically meet up, meets up. It's like the biggest, people call it the Illuminati meetup. Um, this is where last year everyone was worried because their whole ethos last year was the Great Reset and everyone was panicking because Prince Charles was the, the leading speaker for the Great Reset and they had um what's his name klaus schwab talking about uh a digital like a currency reset and ha- about everybody not owning anything and being happy um so who are the kind of attendees that attend world economic forum, forum? um the head of unicef the head of um world health organization the head of the international monetary fund uh jerome powell the head of the the uh, Federal Reserve, um, Boris Johnson, literally everybody and everybody, there's anybody, and then you have the likes of Bezos, Musk, everyone that is a multi-billionaire or is a has CEO from any major company is there. If your company is not at World Economic Forum, you haven't got the links in countries to allow what you want to happen to kind of happen there. So World Economic Forum is basically very misunderstood and people think that they're really bad and they've got all these bad intentions when really it's just actually a bunch of ridiculously rich and ridiculously powerful people chatting waffle and listening about their own waffle pretty much if you ever watch one of their videos it's just them going yeah so basically what we need to do is we need to do this because this Listen, would be good for the world and good the world would be guys, good if we keep doing our businesses guys the world is a complete mess yeah the world leaders don't really know what they're doing they have no idea so you know what we need to do as a culture we need to learn to govern ourselves first so then we can govern the economy of our house and then we have a friendship economy that that, that about wealth and forward thinking and that's how we grow our towns and our civilizations like this is all the, the the blueprint for that when you hold your crypto and remember or if if you guys don't know um Ethereum used to increase in its supply, and now they're changing the code. So Ethereum this, burns yeah, and decreases the supply. Important. So let's just do, show this on Insta. For so sure. the reason I'm talking about the World Economic Forum is because they've created the Global Future Council on cryptocurrencies. Oh, shit. Yeah. We need to and they've done out. a beginner's guide to cryptocurrencies for all people that attended World Economic Forum. So now oh, wow. all the most important okay. people in the world have now got a PDF guide on a beginner's guide to crypto. Who else has a PDF guide on a beginner's guide to crypto? We do. Oh, when did we have that? Did we have that before the World Economic Forum? We've had it out for a while. I think we've had it for a while. <laughs> oh, look, at, I think maybe someone from World Economic Forum might be on to us. <laughs> and might be watch- I've said this before that maybe I think someone might be watching world economic forum we don't want any royalties we just want to just i want more crypto we just want more crypto for everybody now 
they've got a guide on buying cryptocurrency oh. on making transactions what is blockchain oh, about God. privacy about running a node oh wow. now why would world economic forum have a bit for the beginners about running a node would a beginner need to run a node no it's because they want all their big whales and big players to become node runners and so they can pump their own bags basically that's funny because i'm sure a couple of months ago when we read the coinbase earnings report it said something about giving access to nodes to whales mm. and now look at it it's now at the world. To the <laughs> now it's now they're giving them a beginner's guide on how to set up your node and then they're talking about the hardware that you would need they're talking about about what proof of work is they're talking about how the energy consumption isn't actually as bad as people are making it out to be mm -hmm. oh, no that's, that's a bit funny talking about programmability look what's got its own page ethereum has its own page oi, oi. so one of my home girls let's see if she's live right now alice she said yeah she said am i selling my ethereum Selling my Ethereum, I would rather sell my little toe. No, I wouldn't. I'd I would rather sell my little toe. Yeah. Because you think about it, you in 10 years' time, you can get like a robotic little toe. So, can, you can scan things with. You could probably get with like an ETH loan. Yeah, Cause exactly. Because you can use ETH as cholesterol. Yeah. So, so, that's what it is. so no, Alice, last... I won't be selling my Ethereum. St uh, stake it, get interest. Last bit of interesting notes for this. Just So go oh, back to wait, this. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. This is quite funny. And look at this, what they've got in their beginner's guide to crypto. So the first one that they've got up at the top it's is Algorand. Algorand. What's funny and a funny quinky dinky about Algorand? Algorand is created by none other than a previous lecturer at MIT. Who else has done a lecture at MIT? Gary Gensler. Gary Gensler, the current head of the SEC. That's a cool winky dinky. dinky. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Charles Hoskinson. And Cardano, who who do you think has done a previous lecture on cryptocurrency at the World Economic Forum? Oh yeah, Charles, Charles Hoskinson. That's a cool winky you. dinky. We saw you, Charles. We saw you. Right then, here. most interestingly, we have XRP and Ripple. Now let's and Stella. Solano, now let's go Solano, down to the and Solano's there. Let's go down to the last page and look at the contributors for who's doing this. Managing Director of Global Head Link of Blockchain at JP Morgan, surprise. Uh, partner at Andres Harowitz, surprise. Um, Innovation Fund Lead for UNICEF, that's an interesting one. The Chief Executive Officer of Stellar Development. Oh, that's funny that theirs is a recommendation for all the global oh, leaders like, to buy. Like Stellar XLM, yeah? Yeah. And Yo, then, Harry has been putting me on that for time. And then the final one, who is one of the reviewers of this whole document? Brad Garlinghouse, Chief Executive Officer of Ripple. Oh, there we go. Oh, so I wonder why. They're inside bags. They're just basically inside pumping their own shit. So we've kind of just told you the blueprint for the exact tokens that the whales have just been given a beginner's I mean, guide it's on not, how to get it. Obviously, obviously like, like, let me speak devil's advocate. You know, it's not financial advice. And maybe, <laughs> maybe after all these global thought leaders get given this, you know, certified document, maybe they'll read it and be like, maybe Boris Johnson will be like, oh, Solano, that sounds silly. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> we don't want Solano. We don't, like, is, is this what they're going to think? Do you think, do you think... I mean, I'm surprised polka does not hit. Um, but anyway, and like, Litecoin. Hey, I, I'm still back in polka and Litecoin, even though they're not on the world um, uh, economic forum, economic forum of cryptocurrency. But anyway, so Cardano, like this. Oh my God, Cardano's gonna go crazy. I yeah. Need, I need to get my card down. So that's one of the reasons why the market might be moving. And it might other, be, or it might not. Then the other day we had the B word as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had that's the B word, uh, which I really highly, good? highly recommend to watch because it was quite obvious, like we've been saying for a long time, that Elon Musk is very <laughs> pro crypto <laughs> and very pro Bitcoin. He's even wearing a Bitcoin t-shirt. Wow. But, you know... Yeah, this video we highly recommend the, the B word. Um, let me just show with Kathy Wood goat. Kathy Wood, she the goat. So this video right here, the B word live. Kathy Wood, Jack Dorsey, and Elon Musk. Must watch. Must must, must watch. watch.
you got to shut out. Um, it's only one hour of your life. Please watch it. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's that's that alone literally turned around the entire direction of Bitcoin. Because in this call, they were asking Elon about Bitcoin. Um, and he was just kind of saying, they were asking him, do you like Bitcoin? Are you against it? What do you think about the mining? And then he goes, oh, no, the mining issue is definitely going to get sorted out. So this whole dip that was apparently caused by Elon being worried about the mining, he's just basically in one sentence, going, oh, no, it's going to get sorted out. And then he went, oh, well, what about um, companies not having Bitcoin on their balance sheet? He's like, no, I'm recommending every company have Bitcoin on their balance sheet. That's what Elon said. So then all of a sudden, everyone's got this confidence. So again, we did put it out there that there was some dates that we thought the market might turn around. And uh, those dates were pretty... Pretty spot pretty, on. Pretty accurate. Pretty Listen, accurate. guys, this is not financial advice, but I'll tell you what I do personally, and if you choose to do it, do so at your own risk. I personally purchase 0.1% Bitcoin every single week. That's my dollar. So you can dollar cost average in terms of like pound sterling, dollar cost average, 50 pound a week. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Or, or, or hundred dollars a week. But me personally, I like to crypto dollar cost. Oh, sh- I don't think I've ever said this before. I like to crypto dollar cost average. So every week I try to purchase 0.1% Bitcoin. If I'm, you know, if I'm feeling good, I might get 0.2, 0.3, but literally 0.1% Bitcoin is just a thousandth of the price. So if Bitcoin's $40,000, 0.1% Bitcoin is $40. Come on, man. Like everyone in their mid twenties should be able to pay that. You yeah. know what I mean? You should definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. be able to. That's the truth to the cinema. Exactly. Right. That's and two then, taxis. Exactly, for sure. And then and then I like to I like to accumulate anything from you know two to five percent Ethereum every single week. Like one percent Ethereum, y'all can afford that. That's that's 13 pounds, right? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like whatever the price of Ethereum, if Ethereum is two thousand dollars, then one percent is twenty dollars. Don't tell me you can't stack one percent ETH a week. Of yeah. course you can, right? So yeah, I'll I'll be getting anything, anything from two to five percent, maybe on a good week, seven percent, and I'm always increasing. Um like Everyone talks about dollar cost average, dollar cost average. I don't think many people talk about crypto value dollar cost average. I pretty much like to buy it irrespective. I've of never price. heard anyone really mention dollar cost average in non crypto. Yeah. Talk about it in stocks, but not really. So we kind of went over this the other day, um, the latest Tesla earnings report. Um, but we're just going to quickly have another quick look at it because surprise, surprise, it was phenomenal again. Um, so um, in that dip, expect Tesla to get bought up crazy. So let's just go straight to the numbers um, and look at how it's been doing a quarter over quarter. So we can see the revenues. We'll just go straight here to the total revenues. So total revenues since uh, Q2 2020, 6.036 billion. And now they're at 10 in the last quarter. And then they've jumped all the way up to one. 11,958. So year on year, that is a 98% increase in revenue. Wait, 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 wait. Let's just say that again. Nine, Tesla increased their revenue by 98% in one year. Yeah. From 2020 to 2021. Yeah. But this is where it gets even more funny. So let's go and look at their net income attributable to common stockholders, including general accounted practices. One year, their net income is up 998%. Oh, my God. Their EPS is up, which is earnings per share, is up 920%. Do you think whales are going to be investing if they missed out last quarter? And why has this sudden increase popped off like this? Oh, they'd be investing in Tesla stock. It's because of one simple thing. If we look at this, let's just quickly go to this. This is the game changer. And we said this last quarter when we read the earnings report last time. So the last time we read the earnings report, we noticed that the Model S and Model X production was actually at zero, but somehow they had still made profit, even though they weren't producing half the cars that they actually make. They've now started production of the Model S and Model X. But when we look at it in comparison, Model S and Model X production is at 2,340 cars versus Model 3 and Model Y at 204,000. 
So what are their profit margins going to be like when this gets back up to the old numbers of 16,000? They're going to go back to all-time high. They're going to be at like 3,000% profit, which is dumb. That's crazy. Plus, they've got the cyber truck coming. Plus, they've got the truck coming. And then the ultimate final one that I just want you to show, final one, like we always show people about Tesla, is Tesla a car company? No, because their solar deployed is up 215%. Their solar storage deployed is up 204%. That's it. Now, that's interesting considering Elon is very confident that the mining issue with Bitcoin is going to be sorted out. I wonder why that is. Mm -hmm. I wonder why he's so confident. I wonder why he's so confident. Mm -hmm. But yeah. who is so? Because we're not financial advisors. But I, I think it's probably because he's going to announce that Tesla's going to provide clean energy mined Bitcoin. But we've got a paper about that that we're writing, um, pending. If the World Economic Forum want to steal that from us, <laughs> that is so funny. If we drop that, then all of a sudden, a week later, there's like papers everywhere about um, Tesla Bitcoin mining. Yeah, we need to energy. publish that. Yeah, we need to publish that. So, well, we, need to, we need to lock that intellectual, intellectual property. Yeah, that's a hard That's document. a crazy document. Yeah, it is actually. Especially if we give it to financial advisors, that's actually a <laughs> mad hard document. Yeah. Oh, I could actually leak it to JP Morgan. Hmm. That's actually mad. I'm now realizing how deep this actually goes. For <laughs> actually, deep in it. It's actually pretty mad. Okay, so that was that earnings report. Um, I was going to do the uh, Robin Hood one. We'll do that one quickly. We'll do that one quickly. Because I think it's important to do. Robin Hood investors relations. For those of you thinking about investing in Robin Hood, now, does anyone remember from any lessons that I've done or anyone think I've ever said in any call ever, what happens with a tech IPO in its first six months? Does anyone remember? Did anyone invest in Coinbase? Did anyone invest in Airbnb? What happened in the first six months? Does anyone remember? Type it in the notes. What is due to happen? When a tech IPO comes out into the stock market, what happens, guys? It tends to go down. It tends to. It tends to. It tends to be a quick book for all the insiders. So for all the people that got in early in the initial like seed investing before it went public, and on Robin Hood, it's quite interesting who it is. It's Naz and um, Snoop Dogg. And yeah, Nas, Nas rapped about Coinbase yeah. in a bar. Yeah, so he made shitloads of the IPO, even though the price actually went down um, when, it, when it went public. Um, he still made shitloads. Um, and the same with what is going to happen right now. So I potentially think Nas is going to make a billion off this, and so is Jay-Z yeah. off this Robin Hood IPO. Yeah, I wish Robin Hood was available for the UK, man. So oh, their referral man. scheme is so lit. Yeah, it's two stocks. I would kill her. Um, why can't I find investors' relationship? I swear, if in the UK we had access to the American apps, I would have oh, made 10k mate. in referrals. Ah, right, here we go. Robin Hood investors' relations. Okay, let's just quickly do this one. I'm not going to bore you to death with this, but it's important because I know there's going to be a couple of people watching this that are contemplating investing in Robin Hood. Um, but well, we can invest in Robin Hood now, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it, yeah, you should be able to. I think it's public now. I think it's gone live. In the in in, in the UK, like, do you reckon we can use free trade? Can I check? Yeah, do you want to check? Someone check. Check if um. Can you can you can you check if Robin Hood is available to buy? Um, free trade. Yeah, yeah. Or, or trading two one two. I'd be interested. I'd be so interested if it's on free trade. That would be a game changer. It's normally on trading two on two. They always get there. They're doing an IPO roadshow. Registration statement. Can't find it. Oh, there we go. SEC filings. No internet connection. Okay. So oh, shit.
So we're just finding the Robin Hood earnings report right now. Oh, okay. You're going to have to save this for another episode because I can't find it at the moment, unfortunately. Definitely. Okay, so that's that. All right, final thing. Should we show them some TA stuff? Yeah, why not? Because bro? you are now a TA wizard. No, 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 no. <laughs> Come on, bro. You want me to do the TA? Yeah, bro. Oh, that's pressure. I want to do the TA, bro. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I never do this. I'm still. I'm still. I'm still a bit of a new. Yeah. Ruby Sun Trade Two One Two. It is. Oh, Ruby Sun Trade Two One Two. That like the irony. The irony. The irony. Thirty-seven dollars. So be prepared. It's very it's likely to go down by at least sixty percent, but. It's have very a, likely after six months it will fly. Wait, wait, wait. Let's 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 actually live. Oh yeah, there is good. The yeah, yeah, okay. Let's 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 live. We've been on there for like uh, since the 29th of July. All right, let's have a look. Let's have a look. There was the dip. There's the first one. Let's have a look at the, let's have a look at the one. Put it on there uh, on the 29th of July. It dipped straight away, and now it's recovering pretty much. That's really fast. I reckon it's gonna be. I still wouldn't touch it for a month. I reckon it's going to dip again. Because look at that resistance line. Well, we're looking at five minute time frames. Like, we never do this. Oh, it's just broken over it. Yeah, it's gone. Oh, no, it's got a bit it's more just up. here. It's got a tiny bit more there. Okay, so this is the resistance they need yeah, to break yeah, yeah, right yeah. here, right? I'd say over just where the wick is. And See then the top we got, of that green wick. We got, we got some support. Oh, shit. So we got some okay. The guys on here. Okay, so basically we got a pretty strong support over here at thirty six dollars, which yeah, is, that is a looking pretty support. tight. This looking pretty tight. But I mean, this again, this is five minute time frame. So mm -hmm. this is yeah, only right. a two day chart. There's not. Is even a good trading opportunity right now? You reckon? I reckon that the market is too volatile. I would. I, I, I would wait. Okay, right. So I would short it personally. You would share. I would put, personally, if it's an IPO, I'm trying to short it on the trade oh, and then invest real? in it at the bottom. Okay. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay. Unless it's something that I feel I must have, like Coinbase and Airbnb, uh -huh. then I'm going to short it down, make a couple hundred off on the short down, on the way down, and then use that money to invest in it at the bottom price. This is looking like a relatively strong uh, resistance, to be honest. So I wouldn't be so, I think shorting the market Let's would have a look be... at some of the indicators. Let's do that. Which one do you need? You press the plus instead of the. Yeah, I'm tricky. There we go. Let's go, Don Chance. Because that'll, that'll tell us really if that is the resistance level. Yeah, that's yeah. coming down. This is coming that, down. That is definitely okay. coming down. This is, not, this is not inside trader information, but if we were to hypothetically trade this, we would short it. Yeah. And then pretty much down to, back down to that by, support level. By back 36. here at 36, 36.96. But I think it could go lower than that, to be honest. Oh, for real? Are you thinking down there? I, I reckon you thinking, even lower. Holy shit. You think here? Yeah? Uh, let's check the, um, the RSI. Guys, then go to the daily and see what it says on the daily for the RSI. Because if it's overvalued like crazy on the daily RSI, then we know. I mean, can you? Can well, you there's like, no data. Well, you can't really because it's only two days old. Yeah, true. I mean, over here it's looking like a, it's looking okay. It's looking like a sixty-two, but we want it. We want it to drop back down to that that forty level. Yeah, as a buy. Yeah, I would. I would say personally, I. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't touch it. Sit That's on it for a minute. I'd sit on it for a minute. Do you know? Do you know what I like to do with new stocks? I like to throw in a little bit, like ten pound. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, yeah, just yeah, to yeah, see yeah. how like my yeah. own ten pound does. Like at the end of the day, Robinhood in one year's time will not be thirty seven dollars. It could potentially be three hundred and seventy. Yeah, I see. Potentially, that. I, there was nothing stopping Robinhood doing a ten x. I see that. Oh, so nothing. we got a mess from from Muscle Beats. If you have twenty to invest in crypto stocks, what would you buy? Check for our. Right now, um, I'll do stock. No crypto. Uh, yeah, so twenty pounds. Um, I mean, it's not, it's not, uh, it's, not it's not financial advice, but me personally, I'd be uh, my best kind of. It, okay, if it's just one crypto, I would literally just say, Bitcoin. I would say if 
Yeah, okay. That's I'd say cool. ETH because you're going to get a bigger max return uh-huh. off it. I would then stake the ETH. And then from staking the ETH, ETH, the yield that I'd make, I would take some of that out, that yield, and put that into stock for security. There we go. That is a play. That. that is a fucking play. Do you know what I think you misjudged though, Mr. Harden? Like, I think, I think you misjudge people's discipline. I always, <laughs> I always assume that people ain't gonna do shit. So I'm just like, okay, yeah, buy, just be, put buy, yeah, yeah, buy, yeah, just buy, buy, buy this and hold. In, in my, in my opinion, but um, yeah, let's just take some uh, open questions. Do do do. Stop. We got to the Bitcoin chart. We got oh, to the Bitcoin oh, chart. Okay, okay. Come on. Okay, sorry. That's like the highlight of the week. All right, all right. This is the Bitcoin chart. I think you've got it on the red tabs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. I got it over here. That's the ultimate highlight of the week. <laughs> oh, that's five minutes. We don't want to go in five minutes. They want to think we're in a dip again. No do the days. Well, to me, that that kind of looks like uh, Bitcoin's gone up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> just just a little slight bounce off the support. Okay, so we could be looking at. Um, we're not going to say we said a 29k or 28k support. Because yeah. Dom, think, Dom hates it when I say I told you so. Do you think, do you think we're going we're gonna to get down to the 36k mark yeah. again? Yeah. And then bounce back? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we could, be, we could be looking at, so, so we could be looking at some buy orders. Maybe you, wanna, maybe you all want to set a little, a little, oops. We could just be cheeky and look for the order box. Oh, we could. Are we going to be that this? nice? No. No? no. Okay. We've already given, like, come on. So, uh, anyone want to set any buy orders for the for the final cheapest Bitcoin you will ever buy ever personally? In Maybe life. In ever. life. <laughs> in life ever. Um, we predict that it's going to drop down to three six two four two. So. There we go. It might not, but maybe you're gonna be super safe and be like three six five hundred. But definitely. But you are not getting that shit for twenty eight k. No, but you. <laughs> <laughs> Those you times say, are gone. You can, say, you can say goodbye to these prices. You can say goodbye to these prices. Done. Bye. Okay. So. And as soon as that September dip happens on on the stock market, nah, it's not coming back. Obviously, we're looking. Oh, what the hell did I just do? Did I just drag uh, the R- somehow you dragged the RSI on the chart, which I didn't know. Wow, you could do. I didn't know you could do that. That is wow. such a monumental well, thing just, that you've just done there. Let's just, let's just do that again for fun. That is just... But I want, how did you do how that? How did I do it? That is actually so important what you just did. What did I just do? Like, oh my God, okay, so... That is what, trading what we've just, gold. What we've just done is that we threw the RSI onto the trading... Um, on, onto the candlesticks. We've never seen this before. But I've never seen see, anyone on YouTube or anyone ever do that. Okay, so unfortunately, though, it doesn't... Does it tell us that? The, it doesn't tell you the numbers. No, it does, does. On this side, look. On this side, 73. Uh, oh, no, no, point, point, point there, point there, point there. So on this side, this is the RSI, 73, 74.3. I'm doing this for all my long term. Oh, 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 overvalued. It's going to dip down. So it's probably going to dip down to here, as we can see. Actually, no, 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 no. Pro- probably like here, where yeah. the RSI is 43.65. Yeah. So, yeah, we're looking to play. And look at that RSI resistance here. That could be the new support on the RSI. Oh, yeah. Look. Oh, my God. We've just. Guys, we're excited. Literally, if this if this whole lesson was worth one thing, it was learning. You can throw the RSI onto the chart. Which is for a long term investor. This is phenomenal. A game changer. That means this dip here, you would have been like. I am buying that shit. <laughs> look at this, look, 30. Oh my God. That, that You'd have been seeing that like, dude. why is no one buying this shit? <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like, this is the most underva- like, undervalued thing this on the planet. Yeah, yeah. This, the, the, these would have been really good trading times. But yeah. All right. Okay. Let's take some open questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was some mad game. It was. Is it, wait, wait. Is this the first the game ever where we're in person together? No, nah, I think we've done one before. Have we? Yeah, I can't remember when. Can't remember. Okay. Let's go through Let's one by one. In. Obviously, we've got to start with the hostess with the most S. The, with the most S in terms of attendees. Oh, my God. So that is none other than AJ. AJ in the building! Hey! Ooh. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Um, I don't really have questions. I just found it really interesting. You guys mentioned World Economic Forum. I'm really down to check that out. Um, that was just read their document. 
please read that document. I want, I want to. I found it super interesting. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna do that. And yeah, thanks again for you know for the game. No worries. No Monday. Worries. Yeah, man. Okay. So you don't, you don't have a question? Uh, not right now. Not at the moment. No. Okay, right. Let's let's I let's live think. in person right now. But book in aj's lesson so everybody yeah, can see yeah. this is happening right so miss hardy what's your availability tomorrow uh i can do tomorrow after four. uh aj are you available tomorrow after four i'm probably do you know what actually this week is pretty intense for me um there's so much going on that I probably wouldn't be able to attend anything this week. All right. What about what about next week? What are you saying? What are you saying? Monday the eighth. Can you can you can you do early? Oh no. You Monday the eighth. I'm coming back from wilderness. Okay. Uh, but right. maybe. So so no. the ninth. Yeah, the ninth is. Yeah. What about Monday? No, actually, the eighth I can do. The eighth I can do in the evening. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not available. Uh, let's do. Let's do. Let's do Monday the second. Uh, Monday the ninth. We say Monday the ninth. Should do it an hour before the call. Yeah, 7 p.m. I uh, yes. <laughs> it's pretty intense for her then, because then yeah, it's that yeah. and the call. So I would or say Tuesday. Maybe Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday is good. Yeah, Tuesday what? Like, Tuesday what? Tuesday 10th, like 5, 5 p.m. You. Yeah. Yeah. 5 p.m. AJ, Tuesday 10th. Yeah, I'm down. Oh, it's being booked right now in the blockchain <laughs> Um, uh, calendar. Yo, yeah, I'm going to bring out the magic Mr. Harding book. The ma oh, the magic one? Magic the one. magic one. The one that's got oh all the stock God. picks in it. The, the one with all the picks. Okay, so 5 p.m. till 6 p.m. Booking this in right now. This is how you know we do business. Um, free guys. call with AJ. And any questions on anything, including entries, exits, everything, anything ever, Think about them and ask us. This is the time. Okay, so AJ, appreciate you as always. Kevin, my brother, Michaji, you know what I mean? Wagwan. Wagwan, my blood. Man, like Kevin. Been quite quiet today. I think he might be looking after his you. Oh. No, he's there. Oh, he's there. I'm here, man. I'm here, bro. <laughs> Wagwan, what are you saying, my brother? I'm taking in the game, man. You guys are spitting fire, man. Jeez, jeez, jeez. Pull up, pull up. <laughs> <laughs> no, and um, and, and um, Ninja, just to say, you know what I mean, um, regarding doing my thing and and the advice you're giving, that add some stuff to it. That is, that, that is peak, man. You know what I mean? It's just As it says, just keep on building up my portfolio, hiding the bitch to it. You know, you, you never know who might just... You never know. Just, just locked on and something. I'm thinking, you know, you know I, 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 uh, and also, you've already created the legacy content. What you need to do is you need to start redistributing your content on YouTube, on um, what else? Oh, yeah, Facebook yeah, groups. Yeah, Facebook groups, SoundCloud. Like, I don't, I don't personally know what it is you need to figure out, but you need to figure out something because I have, I have, I have tuned into you know a couple of your mixes. Not even, not even for the full hour, just for like thirty minutes, vibing to it or whatever. And it's good. Do you know what I mean? And uh, definitely need to be on TikTok. Yeah, it needs to be on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And what I need again, guys, I need two more days as well. Mm. So I'm working out my time schedule right now, see so if I can sing two more days in there because. I play um, basically everything that's named music, you know what I mean? So I, I don't want to be doing a two-hour set because the time you play 10 tracks, you know what I mean, that's nearly half an hour. You get me, mm -hmm. probably more. So, you know what I mean, I want to be in a case where I'm putting every other day, it's, you can look out for a different variety of music instead of, instead of trying to mix the two in one. You understand me? Do you know, so, do you know, do you know I think you need to go on, Kevin, right? Um, I'm going to go on, you know Gary V is? I heard the name. I don't really. Right, right. So study him up because he can change your life. G-A-R-Y-V-E-E, -E, right? He's a branding king. So the thing, the, the thing is with your thing, Kevin, is that you're an older guy with a lot of experience and a very nice story that people can relate to. So I reckon you can be that guy that people in the crypto community and investing community can support because... You need to start documenting your life more, mate. Like on Instagram, yeah, yeah. on Twitter. Yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, Get your yeah. personality out there because who is Kevin? Who, who is who is Kevin? Like he's a person who works. Um, what do you do again? Security. I do. No, I work as an AV technician. Isn't it? 
Right. Okay. Okay. Cool. AV technician by by day. You know what I mean. Father. DJ. DJ by night. By, by night from Jamaica. Jamaica you know what I mean. Blood. Jamaica. Yo, that's, that is the title. Is that, it, that, is it yeah. Title? No. No. <laughs> that's peak. That's peak. That's peak. Crypto. You know, cryptocurrency advocate getting in the stock market, doing his damn thing. Do you know what I mean? And build that YouTube platform. Yo, we need to make a sound plate for him like that. Mm. We need to make a little sound plate for him like that. And he needs to put that on all of his mm. stuff and just mm. get that out there. Mm. Yeah, definitely, definitely, bro. Well, my, definitely. my brother, like, <laughs> you need to just t- t- tap into your inner wealth and put out those donations. And I think, think how you can sell digital products as well. Like, look, yeah. I'm, 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 this is one of them do as I say, not as I do. I should have NFTs for sales, but I don't. But um, but but I'll, you know, we'll do in we'll do in good time. But ha- ha- have a look into that. Do you know what I mean? Because you could yeah, be. What, what, what's the guy? Gary T. Gary V. Gary V. G. You definitely look into putting some of your mixes out as NFTs. Yeah. That is an area, bro. The game that I've just spat there. This from yeah, no, no. mad game that. Back, yeah. back, back, that when back, we just clock onto that. Mm. Go off. Nah, I'm out. But, 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 but Ninja, you see, you see, same echo, you're spitting those, those um, big fire at me. You know what I mean? When you do two tracks for me, or a couple jingles or whatever, it's going right back in your favor as well. Because I'm not just going to just play it and, and, and just leave it like that. Pending is coming. I'm, I'm, pending. Yeah, I, yeah, there you go. The track is pending. We got yep. some, yeah, we got some. Yeah, we have a mad one. We got some, got some big rhythms. We got some big rhythms. Mr. Hard enough to go. <laughs> 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 we got some. Crazy, man. Should, should, should we do a little preview? Go on. Can I do, do, do on. it on your phone? Do a little. Go on, let, let's, let's, let's show, show them that. Because I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't do it on my phone because I'm IG streaming and I can't do it on the computer because it's, okay. it's already linked, but... Yeah, let's just. I would, but my phone's dead. Is it dead? Oh man, I'll be that time. Do you know what? Let's just let's just go over the Instagram live because. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in the live. Yeah. Yeah, they got enough. They got, yeah, they, 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 they got, got more than enough. enough. Right, cool. Play that in a sec. One sec. Actually, yeah, you could do that and just slide it to the right. Yeah, <laughs> one second. Da, da, da. I'm gonna just re- I'm gonna re-upload the IG. Check this right. This is this is this is one of the next releases. Grime. So it's actually more like drill. It's more drill. Mm. Go. Wait for it. Mr. Hardy, yeah, that's my goal. I'll be there on net for a sec, then go get no one, see one, do I will allow a lot of the sec. Yeah, see me, I get one. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Have you guys got, have you guys got the video for this? It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Okay, like, okay. Because that's, a, that, because, that, that's the next rhythm. Because it will all just collaborate and come into one once the video is there for it. And you know what I mean? People like me yeah, will know no, where it we'll, started. We'll, that was going we'll throw, on. We'll throw, we'll, we'll throw a real party and then we'll... Yeah, it's, it's going to be big because, because what I always say to people is like, yeah, like, you have to ask yourself, let, let me tell you, people who are full-time investors and traders are extremely few and far between. Let me tell you that, mm-hmm. right? Most people, the, the richest people in this world ha- have a basic formula of they live their truth. For example, Elon isn't, Elon even says he's not an investor. He is an investor, but he's, he's not, he's not an investor with a diversified portfolio. Mm-hmm. I don't think, no, right? No. Um, or he doesn't make that his focus. He, he he gets his wealth through providing value. I get my wealth through providing value in, you know, music, arts, entertainment, events, now we're in blockchain sensei. But even me and Mr. Harding are not investors and traders first and foremost. Never. Right? Like, I'm first and foremost an entrepreneur and business operator and artist and entertainer with a strong knowledge in cryptocurrency and investing foundations. Um, I think a lot of people look it look to crypto as their solution, but really, like, it will be better for somebody to get a better job that they get paid a bit mm-hmm. less, less or whatever, but, but they, but they get more, more time. free time yeah, 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 and then yeah. they can balance that with their passion and then have been the headspace of investing crypto. But I think a lot of people look, look, look to the markets to like solve their problems. And that's why, yeah. that, that's why I say like, you need to tap into your inner wealth. Yeah, you know I read it's in uh, Money Master the Game today and he was saying that the richest people in the world all agree that 
money doesn't actually solve your problems. The statistics suggest that once you get to 37K, the happiness doesn't change. So what actually does change is what you do with the money. Um, so your happiness comes from what you do with the money, not what how much you make. Does that make sense? So yeah, yeah. that's that's what people need to focus on is what they do with their money at this moment in time sets up a, a, like a, a foundation of principles of happiness that never end. So just once you've got those kind of principles of this is what I do with my money, no matter how much it is, that's that's your happiness. And then you'll just attract more. I think I think people should see like cryptocurrency stocks, investing, trading as as part of their inner wealth strategy. Mm -hmm. So like part of my inner wealth strategy is that I need to spend a lot of my time. I know, Kevin, you can relate to this completely focused on just the music. Mm. Like I've got, to be, I've got to find time just to record, just to, just to, just to make beats, just to write. That's why I'm completely tuned out of the markets, right? Then there's time to concentrate. There's time to only care and focus on the stock market. And then I'm only focused on macroeconomics. Then I'm focused on high risk, high reward, crypto, do you know what I mean? Small, small crypto, all coin investments. Now, a lot of people would be better off never, ever make it a high risk, high reward, super small, small market cap, all coin investment, because a lot of people don't have the discipline that I have. Mm. You have to ask yourself, right? I like working out and going to the gym, but I'm not as disciplined as my friends who go six to seven times a week. No way. That's why I don't have the body do you know what I mean? That some of my friends do. And it's but the same I'm, with investing. It's the same with investing. You got to know your level you of to, discipline. You have to know your level. And then once you know your level of discipline, you will. That's get true, it. guys. And um, that's something I'm working on hard to to um, work out my time more effectively. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I'm putting the measures in place to say, you know what? On this day, this is what I'm doing, and nothing ain't gonna change that. Yeah. I'm doing this day. Tomorrow I'm doing that. Next day I'm doing that. Obviously, you've got the unexpected stuff pop up in between, but. Um, I'm just, yeah, I'm just getting serious and dedicated. And um, as I said, I scale back and I'm just taking it step by step. Yeah, man, we got a sick motivational video coming from yep. Mr. Spectacular about that as well. So watch, watch out for that one. Um, next up, last but not least, Demario. What up, bro? What up, what up, what up? Oh, hello, hello. How you doing, broski? You all good? Yeah, I'm good, really. Just listening to what you lot have seen, you lot have been talking about, just seeing how... I'm going to apply it in the future when I'm able to trade. Sick. What, what would you say you took the most value from today? Today, it was like, I like the the word forms part, like, because it's just information that's out there, but it's not, you're not showing it's out there. Yep. Unless you, it's like, if you know, you know. If you don't, you'll never know about that. Yeah, facts. That's, that's the game. That's why we call it that. <laughs> That's what we're trying to bring you is just the stuff that's because a lot of investing. Uh, I remember I was watching this video and it really upset me. Um, and it was, I don't know if you know Amelia from the, the chicken shop, the chicken shop dates thing. Oh, yeah. Something for Dave Comedy Channel, where she was going around London asking people about billionaires and about being wealthy and being, being rich. And a lot of people were saying that the system isn't fair, that capitalism isn't fair, that, fair. that people have an advantage that rich people have an advantage and i was like no they don't have an advantage they have a disadvantage they legally have to show exactly what they're investing in and how much they're investing so all you've got to do is google it mm -hmm. but people yeah. don't want to do that they don't want to do that work they want to do work in terms of exchange their time for money. They want to do work, which is leisure, which is enjoy their time. But then we're quite happy to go, oh, this is the richest man in the world. He's got all these billions and he's just made all these billions. But what's he giving me? Why is he still so rich? What's he giving you? He's giving you the blueprint of how he just made all these billions. So yeah. it's like we're seeing Jeff Bezos, we're seeing Elon Musk get this rich, but how many people are going and typing in what things is Jeff Bezos invested in? What things is Elon Musk invested in? Yeah, very true. No, literally, mm. it's absolutely ridiculous when people fight Bitcoin, by like retail people, or, or, or like fight crypto. It's like, but the, but the smartest people in the world and the world leaders are investing in it. Who are you? You just you, you, you <laughs> gotta, you gotta know like where you are. You, you know what I mean? Like, 
in the in the world, right? I would definitely say me and Mr. Harding are in the top 1% of financially literate people in the world. But that's only because 90% of the world are completely financially illiterate, right? In the world of financial literacy, I don't know where, where myself and Mr. Harding stand, right? In the, it, it, but literally, people who are financially literate are one in a hundred in this world, if not less. less. Are, 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 we want, are we want that? We want it to become two out of 100 and three out of 100. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And I think the first so step is, is what you've done, the Mario, which is choice. I think, let's say, for example, out of the world right now, there's what six billion seven billion people mm -hmm. i would say only 700 million of those people are financially literate now i would say maybe one billion of those people are financially illiterate by choice mm. yeah, that's hard they, it's not that they they haven't got a choice to educate themselves about finances they're just choosing not to uh, that's true they just being like disrespectfully ignorant to themselves and going, I'm not good. People are literally consciously waking up day in, day out, knowing that they're struggling, knowing that they're uncomfortable and refusing to go and go, I'm going to spend 10 minutes a day to figure out how I can improve my financial situation. Word up, word up. That's the, the world is actually... Yeah, the world is unfair because um, it, to a certain degree, but it's more fair than it has ever been. Ever. It's it's never been a better time to be poor and struggling than right now, bro. Your grandma you have the most opportunity. All I know is my grandma, your grandma, anyone on this call's grandma was not getting access to the World Economic Forum papers. Mm. Nope. <laughs> And easily have accessible to asset classes where there's only 21 million, aka Bitcoin, in, in existence, or 84 million, aka Litecoin. So in, in, in effect, remaining financially illiterate when you know you're financially illiterate is actually disrespectful to your ancestors, in my personal opinion. Yeah. That's been harsh, but it's the truth. Yeah. Mm. They've done a lot of work to get us here and give us the opportunities where we can read, write, and have access to the things that we've got access to. So for us to not take advantage and then complain about our financial situations is kind of disrespectful. For sure. Because they would literally have died and sacrificed themselves to get the opportunities that we now have for like that. That's partly the problem is that it's too accessible. Mm -hmm. So, people are so like, because because the information is so accessible, it's undervalued. Like mm. we, Mr. myself and Mr. Harding, blockchain sensei, our company is undervalued. Like people undervalue the value of this call because it doesn't. A lot, hundreds of people know about this call, and sometimes, you know, we are very lucky when some people are busy, but theoretically, I think at least 25 people should be on this call every week. The reason why is because people don't have a long-term mentality, and, they, and, and they're like, oh, blockchain says they can't help us this week, but they'll be able to help us in the bull market. Yeah. That, that, really, that, the, the way you would make the most gains is if you were listening to the calls when the market was down and buying when the market was down. And again, look, there was what? four or five people on the course, five people on, on the live. But mm -hmm. what I've shown you, which is hidden in the block on the Instagram page, is information that Could is concrete, concrete information that can, can change your life no matter what asset class you're investing in, mm -hmm. like forever. Mm -hmm. It's 50 years backed, like... Like, just understand by being in this space, you are, I would easily say, a decade ahead of culture. Yeah. Oh. Because the average person doesn't go on YouTube and watch BitBoy Crypto or Alexander Lorenzo. They watch Love Island. Oh, okay. Now, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with Love Island. I watch Love Island. Right, but, but, but we don't watch Love Island first. I don't watch Love Island at all, but I don't, we're like, we don't watch like, as, a, as, a, as a company and everybody involved. Like, we, we take care. It's a cultural shift of, of instead of trying to tune into the matrix and, and, and understand, like, before me and Mr. Harding read the news, we read the charts. Yeah. Let me say that again. Before we read the news on 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 letting yeah, well, words, telling us words is happening in and the pictures, world. right? We read data. 
And if we can, if, if, if I can just inspire one person watching this back to readjust, like this is how the matrix got you messed up because they got you consuming external opinions and drama before information and data. If you can switch your consumption to information and data first, Oh, you're gonna win. Yeah, people. Yeah, that's so true. People, we're gonna have to turn this one into a soundbite. But <laughs> definitely, Boys. definitely consuming opinions before they're consuming facts. Facts, and we've seen that all through 2020. Consume facts first. People just don't want to consume the facts, though. Because they can't deal with the reality, man. But you got to. You got to. Right, guys. This has been an amazing call. I don't Woo! hope you got some game from this call. I know you guys. Know big, you. big game, big game, big game, big game. Ex especially, especially that thing you show us about the, the the fifty year that the fifty years ongoing where the chart hasn't changed. So if people are looking for when the whales go in and out, that was that was peak. That that just give me a kick up the back. So like, damn shit. So just just do what it is, man. You guys so are on fire. Go back to that post yep. at the start of every month and go. Is this an up month or a down month? All right, cool. It's an up month. I'm not gonna invest here because it's already up. It's a down month. Cool. Let me buy this dip. Yep. That's it. Yep. My August is out of it for me, so I'm looking to 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 jump in on September and buy yeah, some stuff in there. Yeah, man. And, I mean, and just kick back. But guys, I, I really gotta say, you know, what I mean, investment is like. Obviously, I never used to invest. I used to gamble, and now, you know, what I mean, I'm seeing where. Gamble is not going to work. You have to invest. And thanks to you guys, man. Completely different game. The investing is, you have the thing which is called an edge, um, where you have an educated guest. So you're allowed to get information that helps your supposed gamble. But when you've got as much information as they're giving out on the internet, like the world economic thing, like the, the data of the 50 years, it's not, <laughs> it's very hard to call it a gamble because it's like, yeah. it's like so certified. It's You're extremely like, calculated. Yeah, it's completely calculated risk. And that's, if you know me, I only gamble when I know I'm guaranteed to win. Otherwise I'm not doing it, it's no, no point. Mm -hmm. That's just my mentality is, Yo, are the odds completely stacked in my favor? That's it. But yeah, man, guys, bless. God bless. One love. All the best, guys. Take it easy, man. Peace out. Recognize the power.